you would know the hidden realm where all souls dwell. The journey's way lies through that misty fell. Within this timeless passage, a guiding light does dance, lost from conscious memory, but visible in trance. This is a poem where Michael Newton starts the journey of souls. Today we are here to talk about if a soul heals when it returns to spirit, and if not, what is the reason? So today you are viewing Elizabeth Listel and myself. Elizabeth is a research committee member uh, since 2017. Well, Elizabeth, thank you for having time uh, to join today in this creation of this amazing video and about the subject that probably is uh, very interesting uh, for many viewers and practitioners worldwide. Um, we will share our experiences about um, souls that need healing after um, a traumatic life and we'll dive deeper into examples uh, when the soul cannot heal completely. Um, would you just say a few words about or some give us some example about when the soul doesn't um, heal completely? Um, from the sessions I do, uh, and by the way, thank you for introducing. The sessions I do, a lot of those um, people that seek LBL for healing purposes, um, their experience is um, that through the LBL state, they are able to access lost parts of themselves. Oftentimes, um, the past life have included trauma, and you could think this was often connected to the death experience, but it, it's usually not. Actually, the past life trauma that we take with us into this present life is the traumas that could occur and we would see as traumas um, through our present life. So it's those unforeseen situations that makes us lose part of ourselves. And that's actually how we put it in the language is that I lost myself or I lost part of me. And that is the trauma. And when we do lose the access to part of ourselves, that will often be a trauma for the soul as well. Yeah. I... Um, and sometimes that part we lose is, is the whole part. And that comes sometimes with a conscious choice just after death. Um, but I think we'll get back into that. Definitely. So what is your perspective on trauma? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it might occur uh, during uh, the moment of death itself, but usually uh, it occurs uh, when a certain event occurs or um, something happens uh, that is very traumatic. It doesn't even have to be a physical trauma. It can also be emotional or uh, a wording, uh, a way somebody words something. Um, it hurts deeply and then it also leaves that kind of uh, trauma. And um, it's not such a, uh, it's not very common, but it can happen. And um, definitely, uh, for example, what people are living at the moment during the war in Ukraine and other parts of the world uh, where the war is, um, uh, raging, uh, people are experiencing uh, deep traumas, and this might also lead to uh, fragmentation or uh, losing parts of themselves. Like, I feel I'm missing something. There is this constant feeling. Yeah. I'm missing something. I'm not complete. Yeah, that's, um, I would describe it that way. 
oftentimes those souls that lose part of themselves through a traumatic experience when they talk about this in the LBL state, um, for most part, they talk about events that somehow are, um, a, a, are based on free will choices from their part or from other people around them. Um, so actually, how I see it now after doing all the cases um, and doing the sessions I have is that the large life-changing events that were planned before we access this life, they are not the ones that make us lose fragments or part of our soul. It's actually those that are somehow connected to, to free will. Okay, that's an interesting point. And we talked about trauma as well, um, causing this possibility, um, right, to fragment. And how does it reflect on the physical, emotional, and body and the soul um, by itself? So what would you say uh, from your experience? Sometimes it's just... Um, people coming in for the LBL because they have this notion as you told about some things missing. I'm not complete. Um, there's some of them actually say that's part of me I can't access. And that resonates totally with the way I see it when we get into the LBL stage and access um, healing stations um, or other places where they they can see things in, in a different light is that it's like there's a frequency of light they can access. So, so from the soul perspective, as this being of light, um, you can say, how, how could that even break? Um, and I think that what my clients tells me is it, it doesn't, it doesn't break. Um, it's just like there's there's part of it that are darkened or restricted. So there are places that sort of the light is not able to to shine in or shine through. Um, and it depends on who you talk to um, in the LBL state, how they describe it. But it's, it's this like if you have a, a, bris, a prism that is able to reflect all colors of the light, then some of those um, areas would sort of be blackened. So there are certain colors it can't reflect. Okay. And um, from your experience, um, have you ever met uh, a client who went into LBL and who managed to restore this light or heal um, in a certain places? Um, a lot of them have actually healed or been able to um, get back into those past life where they lost those parts so we, we could retrieve them. Other times um, they have gotten instructions on how to make the choices in their current life that would lead to them re-accessing those lost parts and, and often those lost parts are as you said connected to um, emotions um, and choices mm -hmm. and what we have access to and though those might be joy happiness um, mm -hmm. calm um, all of those feelings on the positive scale that might not be accessed as easily um, as they would for other people that have the whole spectrum available to them. It's, it's beautiful. Um, one of my clients, um, LBL clients, who, um, who had a very, very difficult life, the previous life, after uh, dying in that previous life, um, they traveled um, to the spirit world and they just accessed the gateway and they just stayed in the dome for a long, long time. There was this dome of healing 
they would float in the dome and the healing was occurring. It was a very, very difficult life. And just when the healing was complete, up to a point where they can cross over and move on, the guide appeared. So the guide was observing in the distance, but didn't come close until the healing was complete. Mm -hmm. This is also important because sometimes the guides will not come immediately. Sometimes we say, oh, I, I can do it in my own. I don't need my guide. Or um, they wait until we are ready because that's also part of our free will that we can say, um, I need to do this on my own. And uh, this is totally respected in the spirit world. This is yeah, a law. <laughs> Yeah, Michael Newton wrote about this as well in the Destiny of Souls, uh, page 93, about traumas and souls being damaged by traumas. And we also mentioned about losing fragments to, to trauma and what causes the fragmentations. So how, um, how do lost soul fragments really affect the amount of energy we bring into our current incarnation could you yeah I, I, for that i think i would refer to one case i had that was actually one of the first cases i had doing lbl and um i was really dazzled because when i asked her in in the spirit state how much energy she brought for for this lifetime she said eight percent and part of me was well that's okay that would be appropriate for maybe a highly advanced soul um and then i i went back to ask it because i knew of this client and had worked with her before so i knew that somehow that wasn't enough for coping with the life she had chosen to to have uh through this lifetime um and we got into touch with the guides and and they actually were talking and guided her back to show her a lifetime where she had chosen a really, really uh, difficult life where she wasn't met on her needs. And the one she was in that lifetime was not um, the common person for, for this lifetime. She was um, incarnated then as a, a young boy. Um, raised by a single mother in a village um, where everything was done according to tradition, but she, this boy uh, differed in um, being gender specific. And at this time we were in the 1100s, that was not seen as, as common and was not appreciated. And those other men in the village, um, from the best of their knowledge and from actually the kindness of their heart, they tried to help raise this boy into being a warrior and he actually died in the battlefield. But being trained that way and not having that, um, it's the, those resources accessible to him because he was something different when, what he was made into um he actually chose that when dying on the battlefield that he would not go back to spirit because he wouldn't risk being incarnated again mm -hmm. um so when we from the lbl session found him he was sitting in the basement of a castle that was actually built a long time after this um this time he was killed in the battlefield and it turned out that that was about 60% of the total energy that um, the soul had accessible that was stuck in that basement and wouldn't go back. And it was really important doing this from the LBL state because what we were able to do was actually show that it was not, it was just part of the energy that was stuck there. It was, it was, just, was just harder to incarnate 
in new lives when you had only 8% accessible to incarnate with when you still had to hold that connection to spirit. Wow. And that was actually what made it possible to access those 60% and to have this earthbound soul um, return to the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how was um, the soul's experience after um, joining together? How was that? Um... The soul was, was joyous and were able to make new choices it was like this was a turning point and actually was like this was supposed to happen which was interesting for me because it told me that the work we do during the lbl is oftentimes actually an important part of of people's journeys because they don't usually have access to do this in, in any other way. And some of this actually have to be done when they're incarnated in a physical body because that frequency of the earthbound spirit or, or the, the human condition is not accessible when we are those beings of light. Um, we have a remembrance of what it means to be incarnated, but we do not have access to the whole emotional field or the biochemistry of, of our physical brain. Wow. Yeah, that's, um, that happens. <clears throat> that happens and um, that's a, it's a very, very deep healing that occurs. Mm -hmm. And um, for that person and for all um, circle of their friends and families, everything somehow shifts when that, uh, that healing occurs and also on the soul level, uh, of course. Um, when you were talking about this, um, I just remember the a case where a <clears throat> client with a severe depression came to me. We did, um, we started working with PLR and then um, there was this journey from the um, moment of death. Simply, uh, there was just darkness. And um, previously, in the previous session, um, he was taken away from his mother as a baby. And that baby uh, was um, somehow lost for him. So that part of uh, soul's energy stayed with the perpetrator, with the people who really stole him from his mother. Wow. And um, uh, the first, when we went to, to the spirit world on the way, um, it was dark and then the light started to, to appear. And when that light came closer, it was the baby that was uh, lost in that life. And it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, re-encounter, we um, integrating and um, healing for him as well. Because um, sometimes when there is uh, depression in play or anxiety, um, it's probably very well connected with something that happened uh, previously that we have no idea about. and. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's amazing how our subconscious mind and how our superconscious mind know where we need to go to heal and what needs to occur for us to heal. Yeah. So this is um, this amazing um, examples of uh, healing, deep healing, and how their lives yeah. change forever. Yeah. And, and they really do. And it's important to know that, as you talked about before, that really a lot of LBL sessions starts with reaching the spirit realms and, and maybe for those that need this deep healing or the return of, of soul fragments to themselves, I often find that we actually do access some sort of healing before going into even meeting the God as you talked about. And a lot of those healing places, for my clients at least, does seem darkness 
uh, is what's evolving them, but not that uncomfortable or, or scary darkness, just a, a sort of this is the room to leave all senses behind. So it would be like some sort of sensory deprivation and then lights come in in later. And if you don't know this as a facilitator or maybe even as a client, you could think that, oh, I'm not even able to reach the LBL state because it's just dark. And I have started to telling my clients up front that maybe we will go into this this place where it's just stuck and that's maybe exactly what's needed. It's not because you're not able to do this and not able to access the lot of light. But the darkness um, does actually hold a lot of healing. Yeah, it does. It's being fully just you. Mm -hmm. So and when we do that, when we are in that state, many things shift and uh, and then st things start to develop and then yeah. everything else happens so you know i'm always wondered why do we transfer these energetic wounds to our future incarnations like why do we need to relive and relive a certain uh, damage or trauma or or, or uh, event or even uh, pattern of behavior. Sometimes I, I don't know about you, but but my clients at least um, often talk about this as as layers of learning. It's like their soul mission is not for the purpose of the of the incarnation is is not so specific but they're training in a specific trait. So it's like they're training gratitude or humility um, or other um, other possibilities or, or, or resources that we would consider um, as beautiful to live by. Um, and to obtain those, they choose lives where they train harder and harder and harder. And doing that, sometimes the soul gets hurt um, because learning about gratitude could be the life where you don't have anything at all. Um, and the life about humility could be the life where you have everything, but then somehow or um, supposed to make the choices um, that makes you humble even if you have everything and, and I tend to tell my clients after sessions that when we learn we often learn through the lack of or by having too much of something and actually we are able um, to choose this which reminds me of a specific case I had with a client that came in um, and she was quite desperate actually because nothing in her life was seeming to work out and she had actually been through anxiety and um, depression and her life up till then had been really really rough and I don't think you could name a trauma that she hadn't been um, exposed to and what happened in in the LBL session was that she was actually put into first she was shown a scene that was um, the raw human condition living constantly in in the fight or flight mode um, in, in the rough edges, it was the warrior energy about every man for himself and uh, being allowed to take from everybody else because if you were strong enough, that was your right. Um, and if you weren't strong enough, you had to succumb to, to this condition. Um, and then she was shown the beauty um, of 
another choice of living in joy, harmony, love, and so on. And and those two scenes were sort of like put up in front of her, and and she was told, in this lifetime, this is your choice. You have done all the spiritual and personal development work up till this time because you had done a lot of psychotherapy and psychology and, and even um, medicines to, to, to get to a better place in her life. But in the LBL, she was put up with this choice and, and telling you've done the work. So now you have to choose because this is a soul's choice you have to do being in the human body and do you want to do the rough human condition of pain and lack and greed and so on or do you choose the love and light and she did and two months after she contacted me actually and told me that everything had changed she had moved into a new place um got a new job um uh, met her future husband um, that she actually married a few years later so it was up to that choice that she made just at that moment in the LBL and that was beautiful seeing this happen um, for someone it's amazing yeah <clears throat> how things can totally change yeah and we have this deeper understanding because as a human brain, um, it's never enough. Uh, we just continue accumulating experiences, uh, knowledge, um, but it's it's like just running in the circle of that three dimensional experience. But when we connect with the spirit, then everything op opens up and there is this deeper understanding that shifts definitely and say, okay, so you have done enough. Now it's time to move on, like a next yeah. stage in the in this life. Um, it's really uh, beautiful. And what was actually interesting about this was that she was actually told that this is a choice you can only make when you are in the human condition. You're not, um, this is not up to the soul alone. It's a, a, a conscious, choice when in in the body that's when you can change that that um leads me now to to another uh point uh is when in the spirit everything is um calm and um balanced but then we come to a body and then everything starts to change and there are so many um problems or uh, issues, maybe health issues or um, mental issues or even emotional um, that start occurring. Like everything is perfect in the spirit, but then in the physical body, things start stirring up and um, uh, everything that happens in any lifetime uh, can leave some kind of um, um, a stain, I wouldn't really call it a stain, but it would uh, bring us some kind of um, discomfort. Uh, for example, the recent client that was, um, uh, that wanted really to understand the relationship they had uh, with their partner. And um, well, there was this feeling of guilt in this past life uh, where both of them were feeling guilty for hurting another one without even knowing that this was happening. So this was something that ha happened at the same time. So I'm wondering if energetically, this is something that both of them picked up from the other and mm. bring it through incarnations, uh, believing that this is something they really feel so on a physical level, it's clear they felt it, this was processed and healed, and then they could move on uh, to the spirit. But I'm wondering now in the, in the physical um, energy uh, point of view, I don't know if you had any, any similar cases where 
energetically the transfer of the feeling or um, something that bothers a person occurs without them owning it. Just so I, take it as yeah. their own. This also could cause the fragmentation at some point. I think mostly those are um, sometimes it it it's both of them. Um, I've had a few clients that actually came in um, both um, each. How do you put that? Each partner um, in a relationship, and they both did an LBL, and they told about meeting the other and and how that went in the past life and and what kind of traumas they had um i actually had one claim that that after meeting this um he was a man in the past life and he had met this woman that he knew he was supposed to be with and then she disappeared um and he just weren't able to live the rest of that life because she knew he knew he wouldn't find her. Um, and they had found each other in this lifetime, but it was still sort of hard to 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 access um, that old feeling of belonging together that they had have because he had made those choices in that life that actually had prevented them from meeting again because yeah he actually he jumped off a cliff so they weren't able to meet in that lifetime again um and that did make a shift for both of them in this life when when the understanding was that when you take sort of that abrupt choice in a past life of course it affects the trajectory of other lifetimes um, and I don't think that the healing or the relationships are uh, made or unmade by healing or not healing but it may choose um, not choose um, it may affect the timing of events but usually when I tell people about LBL in different settings, I, I say we have free will and then we have milestones. And those milestones can be pushed in time, um, depending on our free will choices. And if we don't make those choices that lead us to our milestones at some point, we will be pushed Um someone will be sent in to make sure that we meet them and if someone steps out of character um, because they don't want to solve our, or meet the contract that they made before stepping into this lifetime um, and they're sort of getting into the free will scenario then someone else will step in so um, I think this orchestration that is done from the Time Masters uh, that Michael talks about um, is actually sometimes really ele elegant because it's so profound what actually happens and how it happens. Um, so I think relationships are able to heal this way and it depends on the choice you make. So it should be a conscious choice from both parties to, to heal this, um, otherwise it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful example. Was that actually the answer to what you asked? <laughs> yeah, I talked about more of, uh, of energy um, wounds um, that are created, but that don't belong to us, actually. Yeah, uh, but it all makes total sense when we um, heal and understand. And... Uh, even when one heals, um, it reflects on the partner as well. Yeah, it, it will. And, and maybe that's actually a, a difference because be, between 
the soul's um, choices and healing and the, the human condition and trauma because if the relationship doesn't heal in the physical, you could say if the soul is healed, that and integrated because that's important because you have to integrate some of the soul and the soul healing in the physical body that will will change often codependency issues and i think the codependency is not so much a spirit realm um issue than it is a, a human condition thing mm -hmm. but of course if the soul heals and the individual heals that will shift the codependency and that will actually force the partner to heal or not heal and that would be um the energetic exchange and and the push to heal yeah. um or split up actually mm -hmm. yeah definitely and um so we need the experience in the physical body to heal uh, a certain trauma or to recover a fragment, lost fragment. Uh, we need to re-experience and somehow I have this feeling that uh, we are drawn to certain places where we can collect um, that something lost, you know? There is this uh, case, um, uh, a few of uh, my clients had lost um, fragments in our ancient Egypt and <clears throat> the, the latest session was really interesting as um, there were many tomb riders and it seems that they really uh, removed certain parts or objects that were with that in that tomb and this made um, a soul fragment and what was interesting is that going back to that place, we could recover um, that lost part. And uh, then they could move on to the spirit world. But um, yeah, this was not the first case where this happens. Um, did you have any any experience in this? Um, not, not exactly. Not, not from Tomb Raiders. Um, but I've had a few cases where the soul just as I talked about this, this um, young boy choosing to stay in the physical condition or, or staying in the physical realm as an earthbound soul um, and not going back to spirit, that was a conscious choice. But through all sorts of religions, um, different beliefs have been held about um, how the soul returns to spirit and what's needed for the soul to return to spirit or even um, the shame and guilt from maybe you haven't lived the life you have or um, just going into like through through Christianity it has been a lot about hell or purgatory and, and punishment if you haven't led that virtuous life. And that is actually something that would hold a soul back from returning that part of itself uh, to the spirit realm after, because there through the human life have been um, told a story and lived in a way that um, if you go back, you will be punished or this can only happen in a certain way or this specific deity is supposed to come and collect you if you're worthy of, of going back to spirit and so on. And that might actually leave soul fragments because the soul is too afraid to go back to spirit or is actually sort of, as you talked about, being bound to um, that specific place because there's a notion that some specific deity is going to come and get me and where are they? And when we are free of the physical body, we do not have the same notion of time. Um, but what would be interesting is actually if there hadn't been the tomb raiders in this case, would you have been able to collect the soul? Or would that soul just have been waiting there 
Yeah. Um, I mean, there would be another circumstance. Um, yeah. There another circumstance. But yeah, we need this physical body to bring back uh, what we are missing um, because it happens on this vibration. Yeah, it does. It's just like tuning into the right radio station. Um, and if you don't have access to the right frequency band, you will not be able to receive. Yeah. 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 Wow. And um, yeah. Um, so when do souls choose to get lost and become earthbound might be also what you mentioned about this. Yeah. And um, then also there has to be something really tragic or um, sometimes when they are not aware of the death itself, then they just stay there and because they believe they still live and, well, they just... Yeah, that, it, that they still live or that they... Um, yeah, maybe not believe that they still live, but they are not willing to accept that they actually died yeah. or that the death has been so sudden that... <clears throat> it doesn't occur to them that it actually happened. So it's just like um, a very, very um, intense dissociation um, from the physical body. So they don't register that the body is actually died because they've moved out of it um, so fast. And that would be traumatic accidents or yeah. um, that have a really sudden impact. Yeah, Michael talks about this in, um, in Journey of Souls, about displaced uh, souls, yeah. page 45. Um, and um, brings me to another um, question is, how does the body communicate this, that there is something missing? Like, um, it might be through depression or through anxiety, uh, any other uh, disorder um, people might face. So how does uh, this manifest and at what extent? So did you, uh, could you just give us some examples about when? I've, I've, I've had a few and I'm not just, um, just not at the moment remembering specific cases for this, but, but often I have people talking about this, um, about not being able to access specific feelings. It's why am I not able to feel joy or why am I not able to, to feel happy um, when I see other people happy? Um, why is it that it seems that um, peace and calm um, makes me anxious um, so so sometimes it's not just a disorder but it's that lack of being able to access a certain part of life um, and I guess that's actually why um, most people come in and, and seek LBL is because they have tried all the modalities um, they can even think of and then they go oh I might try this yeah. um, and often that is the solution and if the LBL itself is not the solution often it points them in the right direction because they get the guidance um, from their soul state that this healing modality or this choice in, in your personal life right now needs to be made. And when you're ready, you can make it. It's, um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, example. And then the body is so wise that it tells us exactly what it needs. And um, in that way, by healing the body, the physical, we heal all other aspects, uh, all other levels, and we can fulfill that. Uh, if I want to feel calm, uh, we can reach that state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So there is one more thing. Um, I think we haven't touched upon. We did. You mentioned the restoration masters. But um, what is really the role of restoration masters? And what yeah, we were talking about the Thai masters that Michael talks about, and he does actually um, in Destiny of Soul talk quite a lot about the restoration masters because when a soul is severely damaged, um, it's not so much um, a question of having scars um, because that's what we we do, but it's more like some access to, to part of the soul has been um, restricted. And um, something more needs to be done. Sometimes it's the souls that have made those bad choices for their lives or have done, um, have chosen a body that they are not able to cope with. And the soul goes into a body with a damaged brain or a severe mental disorder um, that could actually be trauma around the birth um, that makes a huge impact on the physical body or even um, events occurring during during um, the pregnancy. And <coughs> sorry. And what happens is that if that soul is severely damaged, um, it's like a splinter is put in. It's, it's, it's not broken, but it's restricted. And it's not able to, like the prism we were talking about earlier, it's not able to reflect light from, from all sources or even absorb light. So um, what happens is that the soul after death um, and initial healing does go into a sort of a restoration area. So like we have an area for life choice at the library, we can access information um, and different healing stations or so training areas. There's this rest restoration um, place in the spirit realm. And those guides working in that place does actually put those souls into a process of restoration. So it's not just like filling the soul and filling the gaps with healing light or reloading the energy like you would recharge a battery. Um, it's almost like um, a transformational process um, of putting this soul into um, a cone, sort of, and and break it down to um, its essential parts, and then building it up um, from the bottom again. And sometimes that requires um, removing splendors or sending in healing light to prepare the soul for this process. Um, so you could see it much like this this uh, metaphor of the butterfly going into the, the cocoon before it becomes a butterfly and everything dissolves into nothingness. Uh, and then through those molecules actually rebuilds into the butterfly. And that's what happens in this, um, in this area. So it's like <laughs> an area where there's capacities like... Um, transmutation and, and even shape-shifting um, because those restoration masters have to um, stand in, in, uh, in, energy, in energy and, and make sure that the soul they have restored are able to reflect anything um, and that all colors and all the, the whole spectrum is accessible again. Um, and actually the case I talked about of this soul being told to make the choice, do you choose the human condition, the fight and the flight and the greed and the, the very human condition and perspective of life, or do you choose love and gratitude and humility? 
Um, and that sole choice that actually turned out that the soul was in training to be a restoration master um, and was taken through this process after making the choice of um, being restored because part of what happens for the restoration masters to be trained is that they actually have to go through the restoration process themselves to really on a soul level understand um, how this happens. Um, and the metaphors I found, and I think that is metaphors because it's an energetic thing. It's not, <laughs> it's not like there are cocoons or um, cones or tubes or anything that occurs in, in the spiritual realm because it's all energy. But that is the human brain's uh, ability to describe it. And that would make it a metaphor for what's happened. Um, but that was basically the process that she told me um, the soul had to go through um, and doing this for her own soul um, through those teaching her and describing the process as she went through it. It's amazing, yep. amazing um, example. Um, and yeah, um, as you say, it's a metaphor. It can be presented in any way it serves and is important for the person to understand during the session. Uh, they will uh, have a representation of what is healing for them, a healing place. No, it can be water, it can be um, mountain, it can be um, just suspending, like suspended in the air and just allow this energy to flow through them like waves of energy yeah. and um, yeah so um, to wrap it up um, a little bit because we are nearing the end of the recording and our time together in this video um, so does a soul heal when it returns to spirit and if not what is the reason I think we answered uh, most of those questions or even more yeah um well it is a physical body that really can receive and reconnect and regain um what's needed and um yeah yes and maybe th that might be good for wrapping it up is that those parts that needs healing when the soul is back in the spiritual realm it doesn't need those part that we in the human condition would see lacking because it's just energy it's just light um, and frequency so it's only when we are in the human body that we actually experience the lack of something because on the soul level free of the physical body we don't experience the need for something in that state, everything is perfect and complete, even if the whole spectrum of energy is not available. Definitely. And um, what we can do or try to do in the physical body is to meditate or to do uh, a few sessions, because then we really can connect with what's missing and maybe we can even understand why um, mm. why do I feel like this and just allow it and uh, accept yeah and yeah. when we are here we are working on so many different aspects um, we can work on one aspect or two aspects in several lifetimes and um, yeah it's um, it's all individual and everyone really knows what they need so yeah. and they they all are perfect just as they are yeah exactly so do you have anything else to add Lisbeth? no just um 
Yes, that exactly. If you feel guided to meditate or feel guided to do an OBL or any other healing modality, that is probably the right choice um, at that time. And the healing occurs when we are ready for it. And ready means in this case that we have reached the frequency where we can actually do it. So thank you for this. Thank you, Lisbeth. It was a pleasure. And um, thank you for to our viewers and listeners. I hope we um, answered some of the questions, some of the uh, maybe um, themes that uh, you might have asked yourselves. And uh, please feel free to leave some comments in the YouTube channel and I will answer so thank you so much Lisbeth thank you